Hello, if you just join in, the webinar will be starting shortly. Just carrying out a sound check, so if you can hear me okay, please pop something into the question box. You will find this at the bottom of the webinar control panel at the right hand side of your screen. Thank you. Hello and welcome to today's CPD webinar aimed at teachers and assessors of the essential digital skills. If you haven't already done so, please put something in the um, chat box to let me know you can hear me okay. You'll find this at the bottom of the webinar control panel at the right hand side of your screen. Thanks. Hello and welcome to today's CPD session aimed at teachers and assessors of the essential digital skills. If you haven't already done so, please put something into the chat box to let me know you can hear me okay and you'll find this at the bottom of the webinar control panel at the right hand side of your screen. You will see on the screen now what we're going to be covering in this CPD um, webinar. The session will be around about an hour in duration and it will explore ways to integrate essential digital skills into other qualifications. This session is being recorded and a link will be made available after the session. Within the session, we'll be focusing on using feedback polls, a question box facility, in jam boards to gauge opinions and views. So my name is Rachel Webster. I'm one of NCFE's curriculum officers. My role is to support centres through the planning, onboarding and CPD process for NCFE qualifications, focusing specifically on essential digital skills. Just a little bit about my background. I've been with the um, provider development team since the beginning of the year with a background of teaching ICT in secondary before moving into post 16. And I've had experience in private, private training organisations and also in colleges. A vast experience of delivering and planning digital apprenticeships and also BTECs ranging from entry level three to level three. 
Now I'm going to start with a quick poll to see how confident you currently feel about your approach to integrating essential digital skills into your current delivery. I'm just going to launch a poll. So how confident do you feel about your approach in integrating essential digital skills in your current delivery? So 10 for extremely confident and one for not confident at all. I'll just leave the poll up just to give everybody time to, um, to put their response in. All right, and see responses coming in. I'll leave it a few more moments. Okay, that looks like we've got our votes in. And we're ranging between the five and the six. So hopefully um, after today's um, session, you should get some ideas on, on ways to move forward. Okay, I'm just gonna close the poll. So we're now gonna take a, a higher level view to start with of the purpose of the essential digital skills. So over the past six years, with the Consumer Digital Index data and work with partners and charities, Lloyds Banking Group has been establishing an understanding of UK digital adoption. So you can see on the slide now an abstract from the findings that 22% of the population are without the digital skills needed for everyday life. Now, Cal, um, Caroline um, Dinodge from the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sports reported that digital skills have never been more crucial to help people contribute to the workplace and society, stay connected with friends and family and manage mental well-being. She also added that the findings from the report showed the continued importance of the work of the industry, education and training providers, civil society and government to tackling the digital exclusion. So a bus and adult digital um, capability and build a world leading digital economy that works for everyone. So let's have a look at the social mobility and some important factors in the creation of building a world leading digital economy that works for everybody. So people who are less digitally engaged are at a real disadvantage and they are more likely to be paying higher household bills, irrespective of income, household or age. For utility bills alone, they will spend an average £348 per year. Four in 10 benefit claimants have very low digital engagement. People with impairments are 25% less likely to have the skills to access um, devices and get online themselves. And people with an annual household income of £50,000 or more like, are more 40% more likely to have foundation digital skills than those earning less than £17,500. And 61% of highly digital citizens have used the internet to successfully apply for a job. Okay, we'll now take a high level approach to what digital skills and adults need to succeed in the workplace. So in June 2018, Warwick Institute for Employment Research was commissioned by the Department of Digital Culture, Media and Sport in collaboration with the Department for Education to conduct a review of evidence to address the policy question what digital skills do adults need to succeed in the workplace now and in the next 10 years? 
The research team adopted the UCO's UK 2016 definition of general digital skills for the workplace. These skills included essential digital skills and the skills linked to the use of applications in the workplace. While they are different across sectors, there are some minimum requirements linked to processing information which are applicable across all sectors. So the main findings from the review is that essential digital skills are needed in a wide range of occupations in the UK and European Union. So from elementary occupations such as selling goods and streets to public places, domestic cleaners, caretakers, window cleaners and also plant machine operators to managers. Now, the use of productivity software is required in medium and high skilled occupations and the use of productivity software such as word processing and spreadsheets is found to be an entry ticket to many medium skilled occupations. So workers also need additional specialised skills and knowledge which may relate to a key task of a job role so, for example, creating presentations or to the use of an application, which is particularly important for a sector, for example, a health and informatics system or a customer relation tools. In 2018, the UK government adopted an essential digital skills framework, replacing the basic digital skills. So the new framework is designed for those who support adults to improve their digital skills. The document comes from the Department for Education and contains the standards for all essential digital skills qualifications, along with detailed information on what each standard means. It's useful to refer to this alongside the qualification specification that you will also find on um, QualHub. So I'd like to start off with a, um, a Jamboard activity. So Google Jamboard is a digital whiteboard that allows for remote or in-person collaboration on a shared space. Um, you could use this with your learners or colleagues to sketch out ideas, problem solve, or draw um, collaboratively at the same time. So I'll just explain the first activity of um, I've selected a few different skills criteria from the Essential Digital Skills Qualification and they're going to be represented on the coloured post-it notes along the top of the page. And I would like you to, to just to get thinking about what digital skills different occupational areas would require or might need. So before I share the link to the Jamboard, I'm just going to explain how the Jamboard works, just in case you haven't used it before. So I'm just going to switch my screen over to the Jamboard now. And as you'll see, we've got little post-it notes along the top. Now, at the left hand side, you do have a little pen if you wanted to write an eraser. Um, and that section there will allow you, once you've clicked, to create a sticky note. And there's also a text box um, option there as well. So just to make it a little bit easier, what you could do when you select a post-it note, you could just duplicate it just to see if you haven't to type it all out again and then just move it into the right area which you think is appropriate and then you could just edit it and if you can just pop your name in and then just save so I'll just put off I'll start with an example first but you can just click and create your own sticky note and just move it into the correct area which you think and um, that criteria would need um, or would come in handy in industry. So I'm going to share the link now to the Jamboard so you can access it and I'm going to put that into the chat for you. And you should be able to access that from the chat. But 
if you are on any mobile devices and you can't access the Jamboard, please use the chat facility and I can just edit and put your, um, your comments onto the board on your behalf. So please use the chat if you can't access the um, Jamboard. Just leave a little message. So I'll just give that a couple of moments just to, to get you familiar. And you can select, as I mentioned, any along the top and the three little dots, click on there and you can duplicate that and then you can edit it. Or if you wanted to, you can create your own sticky note. Oh, I can see that there's um, somebody putting stuff into the chat. Yes, that's fine. I will. I don't mind putting those in for you. If you can just leave your name and I'll enter those on your behalf. Yes, I can see lots of questions coming into the chat. That's fine. I'm just working my way through them. Yes, just keep your thoughts coming in.
other boards that I'm quite busy. So you can see how a lot of these skills do go across quite a lot of different occupations. And we could continue and go into even more detail here. So they are quite, quite transferable skills that digital skills are needed. It doesn't matter what really occupation you are in. So thank you very much for your input here. That's brilliant. So we'll now take a look at how you might choose to integrate essential digital skills into other qualifications. But before we do that, I would like to introduce you to a higher level view of what integrative learning could mean to you. So integrated learning can be the thought of an approach where the learner can bring together any prior knowledge and experiences they may have to support any new knowledge and experiences. So by doing this, learners can really draw on their skills and apply them to, to new experiences. So just say, for, for example, a learner might have experience of sending a personal email, but for example, they are currently studying business administration, so they could apply their current email knowledge to a business context in the same sort of area. So looking at the essential digital skills and using the devices and handling information unit, we'll look at some of the requirements of both entry level three and at level one. So you can see the requirements for both levels on the slide now. For section one, using devices, learners need to know what is meant by hardware, software, operating systems and applications, and knowing how to locate and install an application, apply system settings, including accessibility features, and at level one, keeping the operating system and applications up to date. In section two, finding and evaluating information. So learners would need to understand the terminology and processes used when searching for information and online content, using navigation tools, and at level one, learners will also need to understand the process of searching on devices and online and be able to carry out refined searches and be able to identify indicators of relevance and reliability of search results. Section three, managing and storing information. Learners will need to understand terminology and processes used when working with files and folders. So for example, naming conventions, file sizes, storage locations. Learners would also need to fi um, use files and folders to manage and store the information. And at level one, learners will be able to store, transfer, organize, and manage information on devices and across devices, including cloud storage, organization of folders, such as folder structures, file information, sizing and file compression, and the file size limitations, such as attachment sizes. In section four, identifying and solving technical problems, learners will need to understand common technical problems and user errors, and apply solutions to solve problems and errors, such as application restart, device reboot, network connection. And it, um, at level one, the learners will also need need to apply solutions to resetting login credentials, changing any Wi-Fi settings, using any online tutorials, installing and reinstalling software. A learner should also be able to um, use the help facility to solve any technical problems such as tutorials, employer IT support, and even advice forums. And finally, section five, developing digital skills. At level one, learners will understand and be able to develop their digital skills with online learning resources and support such as frequently asked questions, guides, videos, tutorials, and advice um, forums. So now I would like um, to complete another Jamboard activity 
And for this activity, I would like you to think of another qualification or a blended program of study that you've, you're currently delivering or have delivered in the past. Then looking at um, the essential digital skills criteria, I'd like you to place the post-it note in a relevant column indicating whether you whether you've covered that essential digital um, skill criteria at either an entry level three or a level one with your learners on that program. Now you'll find this activity on page two of the Jamboard. So if you just bear with us, I'm just going to switch now to the Jamboard. And just along the very top, you've got little pages. And if you can just click to the next frame, it'll take you to the next activity. So just for shortness, so we don't have to type out all the, um, the criteria, I'm just referring, so using devices, I'm just referring that to number one. So in the second column, it's got a little number, just so we don't have to type out all the criteria, just to save a little bit time. So if you can have a little think of what you've currently delivered or thinking about delivering and what digital skills criteria you, you've had to deliver on that course. So for example, say you've delivered an employability course, you might have covered using devices at entry level three with your learners. And I'm just gonna put a little example on just to get us started. So you can either create a new post-it note or you can just edit and duplicate the ones which have, um, are already there. Try and have a think of what courses you've had experience in delivering before or qualifications you might be looking to deliver in the future and try and see what essential digital skills from this unit using devices and handling information that you would cover with your learners on that course. Oh, thank you. I can see some questions in the quest. Right, I don't mind adding those for you. If you can just pop your name on as well, and if you can put the um, qualification you're relating it to, that would be great. Thanks, Hatton. So you're adding stuff to the question box. 
I'm just trying to catch up with you. So I'll start adding these on your behalf. Thanks. I'll just spend a couple of more minutes. I'll update the ones which I've already got in the question box and then we'll move on. Thanks. Well, thank you very much for your input there. Um, as you can see, you, you do cover quite a lot of the criteria. And I know when you have a proper think, when you come back to it, you can add to this after um, today's session as well, or you can refer back to it to, to get any more ideas. Um, but it's also interesting to see what's not covered as well. Um, and that could be a good starting point when you're going through your qualification as a good starting point for your planning. Okay, we'll just go back to the presentation. So now I would just like to have a, um, a look at another unit and um, creating and editing from the essential digital skills. Section six, 
creating and editing documents so learners will understand the terminology and processes used when editing and formatting text, numbers and graphics and we'll, we'll be able to use and select suitable applications for editing and formatting. So section seven, learners will be able to capture and save media files using digital devices such as grabbing images, including enhancing the image at level one, and they'll also need to capture and save images, sound and video. And just on section eight, at level one, learners will be able to apply layout and format features for text, table, images, charts for a specific audience, along with processing of numerical data. So if we can just refer back now to the Jamboard and then go to page three and we'll complete another activity. So activity three, the creating and editing. Now this time um, you could put it in a text box or you could create your own um, sticky note. So whatever works for you, I'll let you decide which way you want to display your information. But just try and ask yourself the following questions. Do I currently cover this criteria as part of another program? Could my current delivery be easily amended to cover the criteria? Again, please use the question box um, if you can't access the Jamboard and again, I'll edit on your behalf. So on page three of your Jamboard, Get your ideas coming through and I don't mind popping them onto the board for you.
I'm just going to edit the last two which I've got in the question box and then we'll move on. So any other thoughts? Okay, the board's looking quite good. Lots of ideas and thoughts coming in. Um, the occupation for studies in the workplace, so that could be sort of creating and editing documents and also processing numerical data on there. Okay, thank you very much for that. I'll just go back to the um, presentation. So, okay, we're coming yet to the end, but many thanks for everybody's input and work um, so far in today's session. Um, I'm aware that we've only looked at two units from the essential digital skills, and an hour's not really that long enough to actually do that much planning, but hopefully you've had the opportunity to consider some of the provision you offer or may offer in the future and how to identify links with the essential digital skills and how you could integrate um, essential digital skills into other subject areas as well. So it's important to remember the areas of your current delivery offer that don't link well to the um, essential digital skills as these, these areas would be an ideal starting point to um, start your planning with the integration into your delivery. So to complete the session, could I please ask for everybody for one takeaway, something new or consolidated as part of the session. And in true teaching style, can I also ask that you set yourself at least one action to complete after the session. You'll find a place to record both your takeaways and your action on page four of the Jamboard. So I'll switch my screen back over again now. And again, if you can't um, access the Jamboard, please put your comments into the question box and I can add these for you. And um, any additional questions you may have as well, you can also add those. And if I don't get through to answer them today, I will follow up at the end of the session. So you can either use a sticky note or you can try using the, um, a text box.
Thank you for that, Lee. Just keep adding them and I will pop them onto the board for you. Any actions, any thoughts on what you're going to do after the session to think about integrating essential digital skills either into a qualification you're already delivering or thoughts of doing it the other way around. So integrating another course as, as well as your essential digital skills into one program. So like embedding it together. Okay, thank you very much for your um for your input there. And remember the Jamboard, you can access it later by following the links if you want to refer back to the any of the activities for you to, to go into further detail with the other units as well. So um I think it was Tina who mentioned this to create a questionnaire to see how many staff members would benefit from the course. 
that's that's a good good point. Um, a lot of people, it's come from the, um, the survey that a lot of people in current education and work feel as if their digital skills aren't quite up to standard for for doing their job so that could be quite a good one to see how many people who you're currently working with would benefit from the essential digital skills qualification um somebody's mentioned to go through all the agsq units and cross-reference them with the schemes of work from what they're currently delivering yep and anything you identify that you don't deliver is the areas that you need to start your preparation to embed that into your course to make sure that you do cover that criteria. So lots of ideas there. I'm just going to go back to the PowerPoint. And we're at the questions now. So we've reached the questions and answers section. And I would just like to check to see um, what other questions have, have come in through um, through the session. So if you just bear with us, I'm just going to go through through the questions. And please add some if, if you've got anything you would like to ask. Um, somebody's asking, can you share the links to your specs? Yes. Of course we can. Um, I'm going to include those on the, um, the following slides. So all attendees will receive a copy of the, um, the PowerPoint after the end of the session so you can refer back to it as well. When do the essential digital skills qualification assessments take place? Well, these are on demand and they need to be booked through the portal and they will be sat online using um, a system called Surpass. So how long can the qualifications be studied for before sitting an assessment? Good question. So the guided learning hours for entry level three is 48 hours and for level one, it's 47. Um, we don't specify the intensity of the delivery. So the GLH could potentially be covered in a shorter time. Um, there's no problems with delivering it over a longer time frame either. And what's the minimum age for the essential digital skills? So it is aimed at 16 year olds um, or above. Um, so they are aimed at adults. Now, there doesn't seem to be any more questions coming through. Um, if you do think of any, even after the um, call, just please get in touch with me. I'll um, send you a copy of the um, recording and a PDF of the PowerPoint, and you'll get my contact details from there. Um, and we do have to say goodbye now, but thank you all so much for attending and participating in today's session. The sessions we deliver and the support we offer in the curriculum team is designed to promote an advanced learning. So please don't say this activity completed today has been the end of your professional development. Use it as much as you can to reflect on your good practice and identify any other further development needs. Um, please do take a moment to complete our evaluation as you log out because your feedback and ideas do help us develop our CPD process and offer to yourself. And the links on the screen now is to our delivery support page in which you can register for future CPD sessions and also the links to the essential digital skills qualification specifications. I would just like to say goodbye and from everyone at NCFE, please stay safe and we do look forward to working with you again soon. Thank you very much.